things that affected this battle. We've talked a lot about the shield wall, and we've talked a lot about the archers. Those are the two things that make this battle last as long as it does, in the case of the shield wall, and makes it end in victory for the Normans, in the case of the archery. From the accounts you read, and as reflected in the tapestry, which is, by the way, a very good primary source of information, in addition to being a work of art, the Norman infantry couldn't make a dent in the Saxon infantry. The cavalry is charging, and you see horses' heads being chopped off by this axe. <coughs> They're not able to make a breach either. <coughs> but it's this third arm, this third discrete tactical unit that William is able to keep bringing up every time another arm fails or needs rest. The arrows keep coming and coming and coming. And eventually, there's enough unit cohesion of the shield wall then it breaks and the horsemen, that's when the speed of the horsemen really comes in. They shatter through, surround the leadership, and hack Harold to death after he's been wounded with an arrow or a spear, depending on your point of view. And, and well, that's one of the benefits of the archery. With combined arms, it's not just the infantry going up to kill the Saxon. The infantry goes up while the archers and the cavalry and the horses rest. Then the infantry goes up while the archers and the cavalry rest. Then the cavalry goes in while the infantry and the archers rest. Can you tell by this who's not getting to rest? The folks on top of the hill, the Saxons. Exactly, exactly. So let's, right now, let's, uh, let's demonstrate the shield wall first, and then let's demonstrate some of that alternating archery. Part.